What up, folks? Welcome back. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, this is JE Live, and uh, we were supposed to go live last night, but I did a little thing that I like to call burning the candle at both ends, and I passed the hell out, uh, so that is why uh, that <laughs> happened, or did not happen, so to speak. So hope everyone's doing well. Uh, excited to go live again. Last night, wanted to go live, didn't end up going live, so... Uh, we're we're live now. Um, just had to wait for the Yankees Cardinals game to get over with, and oh my God, we got a spider web right in the middle of my shot. Not happening, so that's gone. Um, so yeah, what's up? Let's go, says Ruiz. What's up, Ruiz? What's up, Ricky? What's up, Nathan? Statford got that Tommy John surgery scheduled. He does not. That is fake news. Dr. Detroit. Yeah. What's up, KXM? How we doing? What's up, Jake? Uh, LOL at this vid title. We just discussed this on your YouTube short. Exactly. Exactly. It's what inspired the uh, the video. Uh, no, I don't think Kareem Hunt's going to go to the Rams. The media is blowing Stafford's injury way out of proportion. Seems like the Rams are kind of going along with it, too. Who's your baseball team, Jake? The New York Yankees. Yes, that is my baseball team. Uh, what up, Jake and Ram fam? What's up, Jazz? How we doing? Uh, yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you are here and enjoying uh, your experience. I know it just started, but... Uh, really does help me out. You hit the thumbs up button. It tells YouTube, hey, look, this is pretty interesting. Let's uh, start pushing this on other people. Then other people come in, more people go in, and that's how I grow. Uh, also, if you want to support the channel further, at any point, you can leave a super chat. Uh, I do accept donations, and I appreciate them, although I never beg for them. Uh, on top of that, you can also join the membership. I have a new membership program, six tiers from $0.99 cents all the way to $99 a month. The $99 a month thing is if you want me to basically coach you as a content creator. It's not, understandably, that's not for everybody, uh, but it is there if anyone is interested. Uh, I look forward to doing that at some point. Um, let's see. Did you see the staff for no look to Allen Robinson? Yes, I posted uh, a short on my uh, my channel. Joey Gallo is the greatest baseball player in MLB history. Did he get a hit? It, are Dodgers fans freaking out because he just got a hit or something? Uh I'm, I'm messing. Uh, what's up, Steve? Stafford no look pass today. Yeah, that's another thing. If Stafford was done, if Stafford's elbow was a problem, he wouldn't be throwing, period. Not even a little bit. There would be no such thing as him like, yeah, you know, we're going we're gonna to test it out. No, he would not be throwing. End of story. Um, I don't know why ESPN, when I try to access it on my computer it keeps asking if i want to download 1.2 gigabytes onto my computer like why would i say yes to that so it's not actually letting me see anything without doing that i don't know why uh really bizarre i've never seen anything like that before dodgers padres uh let's see joey gallo is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts yep that's what i expected all right on to the next thing Yankees and Rams, blast me. Dodgers and Rams, end this discussion. Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm from New York. I don't like any New York teams except for the Yankees. So a lot of you people out there in L.A., you like teams based on your location. So you have to at least understand why I at least like one team based on my location. I also like the Jets, but the Jets aren't my favorite team. They're a team I cover, and I enjoy like watching and following. Uh, but I don't have teams in. I, I hate Syracuse. I don't like the Knicks. I don't like the Rangers. Uh, the Devils are in New Jersey, so that does not count. Um, I mean, in reality, I just don't like New York teams except for two. So I don't have any issue against the Giants. Every time I see the Giants, the Yankees, uh, the Yankees, the, the Rams kick the shit out of them. So 51 to 17 and then whatever they beat them by this year. Uh, so I don't I don't have any issue with the Giants. But, you know, that that's my thoughts on, on New York, and that's why, like, I, I've been a Yankee fan my whole life, so, you know, 
And I, I used to, I'll be honest, I used to like the Dodgers back when Don Mattingly was the manager because I'm a big Mattingly fan. But uh, since they fired Mattingly and they started spending more money and they didn't spend anywhere near as much money as they did when they had Mattingly, I'm a little bitter and I don't like them. And another thing, the another reason, yes, I know, Scott, they are in New Jersey, but they're not called the New Jersey Jets. Uh, another reason I don't like the Dodgers, and I've made this very clear, but when I covered the Rams in 2016, when I started doing that, and anytime I tweeted about the Yankees, I'd always get, no, you should be a Dodgers fan. And if you know anything about me, Jake Ellenbogen, you know one thing that I can't stand is when things are forced onto me, because I do what I want. Uh, I am literally the embodiment of the the meme with Ron Swanson. When he hands the permission or the permit, he's like, I got a permit. And the guy looks at him, park ranger's like, this just says I can do whatever I want. And then Ron Swanson's like, like, I literally do what I want. I quit my day job. Like, I, I like a bunch of different teams all over the country. So, like, when people tell me I have to like their team because, I you know, I cover the Rams, that is the first thing. That is the quickest thing. I'm not saying, William, that you're telling me that. But I do have people on Twitter that are like, it's ridiculous that you don't cover the Giants. I'll just I'll just cover I'll just look at Rams content from people that actually cover uh the Dodgers and actually like the Dodgers cuz I can't stand the Yankee stuff in my timeline. And I'm like that's all you that's all you. That's your prerogative. I don't care. But you're not going to get me to all of a sudden be a Dodger fan. It's not happening. So, you know. That's out there in case anybody knew. Who won Yankees or Cardinals? Go Cards. Uh the Cardinals won. And that's one team I've never had an issue with. I've never had an issue with the Cardinals. They beat the Yankees. It's annoying for the Yankees, but I'm not sitting there like, dude, that Red series, I hated the Reds. The Reds were starting to really piss me off. <laughs> but the Cardinals, it's like, you know, I respect them too much to hate them. Another strikeout probably. Yeah, two, actually. Uh, I know others aren't worried about Stafford, but I'm genuinely worried. One wrong hit, and it could go all wrong, or something freakish could just happen. If he's trying to push through it, it could get worse. But here's the thing, though. Because if if one wrong hit happened to Cooper Cup or Cam Akers or Daryl Henderson or Aaron Donald, I mean, that is football. At the end of the day, a lot of football, a lot of the success in sports is luck. You have to hope And you have to luck out that none of your guys get hurt. And if they do, you have to luck out that the guys that you have are going to step up and also not get hurt. I mean, think about how many teams that have probably, in all of sports, had what it took to win a title. And they just dealt with the injury bug. They got injured. They got banged up too much. I mean, I keep talking about this Jets team and how you can't sleep on them. It it all goes to, to shit if one of those guys gets hurt, like a Zach Wilson, or if they lose George Fant. Or if they lose Mekhi Becton again, I'm sure that would be painful. If they lose Brees Hall, if they lose Michael Carter, if they lose, I mean, you got to stay relatively healthy. That's what it really comes down to. So, you know, I I don't think, I don't worry too much about Stafford's injury at all. Uh, I, I don't. Because again, if it was serious, he wouldn't be throwing in camp. And they would shut him down and he would not be throwing in camp. And he would be getting surgery. And instead, he's throwing no-look passes to Allen Robinson on target in the end zone. Yeah, not worried. Kind of goes back to what I was saying on the podcast with Alexis, uh, episode 456 of DTR. I said, look, with, with the, the Trey Lance stuff, everyone's like, oh, Trey Lance, Trey Lance, Trey Lance, he sucks. Oh, my God, he's so bad. It, he, he is literally the worst thing ever. Jimmy Garoppolo needs to start. Why do you think that narrative got pushed so hard? I'll tell you. And this is actually a really good point because I had just finished. There's one episode left, but I had just finished the Derek Jeter documentary, The Captain. And Derek Jeter is so spot on about the media. The media isn't just there to tell a story. And I'm not saying everybody, but the majority. The media isn't just there to tell a story. The media wants to spin something into a story, into a more compelling story. You could tell the media exactly what happened. If they don't find that is going to generate headlines, their editor's not going to give them credit. They might even fire them. They're going to try to spin that into something that isn't. It's why Derek Jeter kept his everything when he was getting interviewed. 
he was he always made himself available to the media, but if you watch Aaron Judge, I think he's a almost a clone of Derek Jeter talking to the media. You know, but yeah, you know, we have the guys to win it all. We're just focused. You know, like it's very it's like coach speak as a player. Okay. But here's where this comes down to. Going back to what I was saying about Jeter. If you look at Trey Lance, okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna relate this to Stafford, so bear with me. If you look at Trey Lance, and I said this on the podcast last time, Trey Lance has won the job. So there's no story. There's no quarterback controversy. That means there's no juicy details the media has now. So their job, essentially, they need to create a story. How do you create a story when the general manager and the head coach comes out and stomps all over all, all over your key feature story? The key feature story, the most compelling thing going into camp this year for the 49ers is, will Trey Lance start or Jimmy Garoppolo? And now that has already been answered before August, and now these people are feverishly trying to find anything to write about. So are they going to stretch the truth a little bit? If Trey Lance misses a pass, is that going to become five passes that he missed? If Trey Lance looks okay, is that going to mean that he looks bad? Yes, because they have to create the narrative. They have to control the narrative. You can write stories. I do I do all sorts of videos on bottom of the roster names. You guys know this. I did I did a video on every single key contributor slash starter predicting their stats last year. Okay. But the thing at the end of the day is this. You look at your team and you look at the big names, and when you're in the media. You're trying to generate clicks. You're trying to generate people buying your newspapers. You're trying to generate attention. People want to hear the content. Like, like the 49ers fans want to hear what's going on with Danny Gray, their third-round wide receiver. But the casual fans don't. And the majority is going to be the casual viewer. And so who is more likely to pick up the Danny Gray feature section of a newspaper? The diehard fan. Because Danny Gray is a third-round pick at SMU. Who's most likely to pick up the quarterback, Trey Lance, on the cover? Everyone. Because Trey Lance is a headline. Trey Lance is the face, the future face, the hopeful future face of a franchise that has five Super Bowls and is one of the most popular teams in the sport. That is what sells headlines. So when you hear about Trey Lance and struggling, I don't put too much stock into it. Because they have to generate headlines now knowing that Trey Lance won the job. And now they don't have the card that they can just pull it out there like it's a freaking Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. They can't just pull the Jimmy Garoppolo quarterback controversy card because it's already been stomped on. So they're creating a narrative. Now going to Stafford. The, the Rams won the Super Bowl. They're going into year two. Jay Glazer comes out and immediately says this team is... is Probably as good as it sounds to repeat. They sound great. Everything seems great. They seem very likely to repeat. They seem like a team that's ready. You have Sean McVay, who's not paying any attention to the fact that he won last year. It's all about this year. You got Stafford on the right, you know, obviously of the right mindset. You have Cooper Cup of the right mindset. There are nothing, there's nothing to talk about. Van Jefferson, it's a perfect example. Van Jefferson had that knee thing, okay? immediately, and I'm not saying every media person, but big box media, they look at that and they're like, oh, starting wide receiver for the Rams has a knee issue. That's a headline. And then the Rams come out and they're like, eh, it's a it's a nick up thing. He's going to get surgery. He might be back for week one. And now all of a sudden, that is not a headline. That is not a big deal. It's not going to be decisive. It's not Cam Akers torn at Achilles. It's something that he could be back for week one. So you have to make something out of nothing because these people have to sell. They have to sell themselves. They have to sell their articles onto readers. And so now the narrative is, and this, by the way, this isn't just writers. This is also people in the media that are on TV. So now you have Stafford. And as soon as they find out, oh, he's not throwing today. 
Sean McVay wasn't allowing him to throw. Comes out and says, yeah, you know, he's giving him some time. He's had some discomfort in his elbow. And now it comes out, oh, he's got thrower's elbow. And now the narrative is that Matthew Stafford has a serious elbow injury. And some people are trying to say he has to get Tommy John. And some people are trying to push the narrative that, oh, my God, did the Rams screw up paying him? No, first off, that does not justify anything about the Jared Goff trade. The Jared Goff trade has already been won by the Rams. Does not matter how Jared Goff plays the rest of the time because Matthew Stafford did exactly what they needed him to do, brought them to the Super Bowl, and won the Super Bowl. So you can't take that away from him. Even if he never plays another game again, he's going to. Okay? But this is the thing. This whole narrative pushing thing is a load of BS. Stafford is fine. If he wasn't fine, he wouldn't be throwing the ball. Okay? He would not be throwing the ball. It's just like Trey Lance. If Trey Lance was that bad with the 49ers having the roster they have, then maybe they would probably be going with Jimmy Garoppolo or at least making that a quarterback competition. It's controlling the narrative. It's trying to create a story that isn't there. That's exactly what Derek Jeter said in his documentary. The reason he just kept things straight to the point, the reason he wanted to have a good relationship with the media but not giving them too much is because they always, they'll take it, you give them an inch, they take a mile. And that's the thing. So Jeter would say straight up, look, hear me out. This is it. This is what's happening. If they asked him, Hey, did you hear about Alex Rodriguez taking steroids? What are your thoughts on that? That's not about me. Why are you asking me how I feel about him taking steroids? You know, it, it would be something like that. It, and then, you know, as Jeter brought up in the documentary, he just views that as a distraction. He just wants to win. He just wants to keep everybody on the straight and narrow. He wants to win World Series championships. That's the goal. Just like in the NFL, the goal is to win at Lombardi, especially now with the Rams. They want to run it back. Jeter had a lot of experience running it back. They won three straight, almost won four straight. So here's the thing. Jeter... As he says in the documentary, I apply it to everyday things. Because right now, perfect example, someone just brought up, Shane asked, brought up Mike Florio, okay? Mike Florio just wrote something on Twitter. I saw it today. If Jimmy Garoppolo is released, don't be surprised if he is a Ram. There is nothing to that. The Rams like John Wolford. The Rams like Bryce Perkins. But this is called connecting to what is already there. It's like spider web media. Do you know what that means? I just made it up, so you probably don't. But I call it spider web media because essentially what it is is we're taking a narrative that's already out there, Stafford's elbow, and now it's like, oh, let's just move the puzzles together to make them fit accordingly to my narrative. So now, of course, you already have something out there. Stafford, he might get hurt. Oh, he might not last the whole season. So now insert Mike Florio now saying, oh, J you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, he's right there. He could be a Ram. No. No. If he is a Ram, fine. I'll admit that I'm wrong. But that is all that felt. That did not feel like he had any sort of idea of what he was talking about. That felt like he was just making it all a spider web, having things to, to stick together. So that, in my in conclusion, and I think just watching the Jeter documentary, it's really taught me a lot um, about how, you know, athletes kind of view that, you know? Not all of them. I mean, some of them are an open book, but... Jeter didn't want to give them, you know, a headline. He didn't. They, I mean, it would be like, hey, what did you think about this? I don't know. Ask that player. Or it'd be like, that's the first time I heard it. And that's the thing. So this whole thing, oh, Jeter, you know, bad guy. He didn't give us the headline. Yeah, Jeter's protecting himself and his team by not giving the headline. It's smart if you think about it, because people would look at him like, oh, he's got to protect his teammate. But if, if think about it, they would go up to him and be like, hey, what are your thoughts? Like, you know, what, what's going on with Gary Sheffield? I don't know. Talk about Gary. Talk to Gary Sheffield. Ask him. Why are you asking me? But again, always try to write something. You know, funny thing, uh, when Jeter got um, his last contract, his one thing. He asked one thing 
during the contract discussions and the disputes. He just asked Brian Cashman and Hal Steinbrenner to keep it in-house. He did not want this to get public. And it got public. It went public. And so once it went public, he felt like as soon as that happened, the media would stretch it to be however you want it. Exactly however you want it. So the media would say, Jeter, you know, Jeter's offended by this. The Yankees don't think Jeter's worth this. And it just became ugly. Because again, I understand they have a job, but again, they have a job to do. Whether it's good or bad, they have to make headlines. And I'm sorry, but Derek Jeter and Yankees agree to contract. If you just wait until they agree to a contract, that those aren't headlines. They're a headline, and then it's done. You want to create gossip, and that's the thing. And they used to do that with Jeter's love life. I mean, you guys know. So that's the thing. I think you can relate that all into one thing. You could relate it to the Trey Lance stuff. You can, you can relate it to the Stafford stuff. They're just trying to create something that's not there. Stafford elbow is in pain. Discomfort. But if if it was anything serious, then why the hell is he throwing in camp? Two days in a row since that has been reported. They're not worried. They're not. Even Ian Rappaport said we're not worried. I did a YouTube short, told you the news, and told you I'm not worried either. And neither are the football doctors. So, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Who is the best team in baseball? I think they're slumping right now, but I do think it's the Yankees. I mean, Stanton's out. Rizzo's out. I really think it's the Yankees. Bader's going to be back, and he's the best defensive center field in baseball. They don't have one guy except for uh, Herman, who has an above four ERA. I mean, they have a great closer who, again, is in a slump. But, I mean, aside from that, I think the Yankees still are the best team in baseball. Now, do they match up poorly against the Astros? Yes, they have to beat the Astros. But I do think the Yankees are the best team in baseball. They have, the, they have a way tougher strength of schedule than all the other teams. Dodgers have a lower one. Astros have a lower one. The Mets have a lower one. The Mets don't even play that good of a schedule. So, uh, yeah, I think the best team in baseball is still the Yankees. I do. I think it's the Yankees. I think it's the Dodgers, the Astros, the Mets, the Braves. Anybody after that, I I don't know. I don't know if anybody has a chance of winning a World Series outside of those guys. I I just don't. It's going to be one of those teams. Why have so many people been saying he might need Tommy John surgery? Because they don't know what the actual hell they're talking about. I'm just saying. Like, it's fun to throw around Tommy John surgery because it's a big thing. Like, oh, Tommy John surgery. But, like, these people don't know what they're talking about. Typically speaking, football players don't get Tommy John surgery. Baseball players get Tommy John surgery because they throw a baseball. And it's completely, it's thrown completely different than a football. I know I've thrown a baseball. I used to pitch. So it's completely different than throwing a football. Facts. So dumb. Nothing Stafford's doing would relate to Tommy John surgery. It's just dumb. It's honestly just stupid talk. That's really all it is. Guys, just a reminder, please be sure to hit the thumbs up. We have 21 thumbs up. We have 49 people in here. Please do me a favor and hit that. really does help it out. It's going to move the stream going further. Um... You know, YouTube will continue to recommend it the more people that thumbs it up. If you don't thumbs it up, then YouTube's assuming that the people watching it don't like it that much, and so they won't recommend it. I'm just saying. So if you want to want to get this thing going, you want to get more people in here, there we go. Uh, The Jets are also in New... Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Growing up in Iowa, interested in Bryce Hall this year. Go Jets. There we go. Yeah, I, I really like Bryce Hall. Um. Brees Hall, I think you meant to say, but I, I, they have both of them. Uh, I like them both. I think Brees Hall is going to be in for a really good year. Nope, I don't. Literally zero. <laughs> I got to have a countdown to when I'm about to do a rant, except that I would never know ahead of time to do the countdown. Uh, 
Yeah, Dr. Detroit's definitely salty. Stafford won a Super Bowl and still is like, nope, Stafford's a joke. I know it's so early in the career, but do you think McVay already has a case for the Hall of Fame? Two-time NFC champion, Super Bowl champion, coach of the year, youngest coach to win a Super Bowl? I do. I mean, you know, if he retired, I think that would have been something discussed, but he didn't, so. Only six years in one-eighth of the league is from his coaching tree, already more successful than any Belichick's protege. It's true. You have a good argument there. Safi has missed five games in 13 years. I'm not worried. Bingo. Stafford getting surgery. Thank you for that third overall pick. Uh, nope. He's not. Not a thing. I'll be honest with you. I like Ian Rapp, and I'll say that Ian Rapp didn't do anything that was outlandish. He even said, he's like, I talked to the Rams, and they don't seem concerned. So, I agree with that. They're not pushing a narrative. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. What's up, Preston? They didn't put it out there. Here's here, All right, here's what happened. Camp is open for media. Media went there. They saw it firsthand, and they're like, oh, shit. Now something we have something to write about. That's what happened. That's literally what happened to a T. The Rams didn't leak anything. The Rams didn't push it out there. The media is now allowed to go to camp, and they talk to McVeigh. Okay, they saw things. They they talked to McVeigh. McVeigh was asked. He said that he has some discomfort, and it became this whole big thing because no one has anything to talk about, and that's why. I do actually agree with this. I know a lot of people wouldn't, but I think the division's pretty weak, and I think the Rams could still win the division without Stafford. Now, do the Rams win a Super Bowl without Stafford? No, but I do think that they have a very, very good team, and Sean McVay with John Wolford, I think he'd be able to get him going. <laughs> yeah, apparently he is. <laughs> I have not, uh, but... I think the Rams are going to get OBJ back. I know there's a lot of rumors like, oh, is he going to go to Indy? I don't think he's going to Indy. The only team I worry about him going to, Dallas Cowboys, okay, because the injury to James Washington, the Broncos because the injury uh, to Tim Patrick, and the Bills because of Von Miller. Those are the only three teams that I, I think you worry about him going to. Thought and rating on Prey, I thought it was great, but the CJ at times could have been better. I loved it. I loved it without spoiling it too much. Actually, without spoiling, let's say. Uh, definitely recommend it. Definitely one of the best movies of the year. Um, and it's the best movie in the series. And the reason I say that is because I think when you look at Prey, it's exactly what you want to see. You have an alien, okay? This is this is with the Comanche Indian tribe. Those are the protagonists. And the, the alien, essentially, the Predator. The reason, like, Predator was cool, but it made no sense. Because while as cool as it was, the first Predator movie had Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's guns blazing type of guy. He's a badass, right? But now you have Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to outsmart this camouflaging alien hunter. Uh, it made no sense, essentially. So now you put it in terms with these Comanche Indians, and I just felt like it made way more sense um, because... They didn't have all this technology. They didn't have the whole, like, tr -tr 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 -tr. they didn't have a machine gun or anything like that, okay? They're using, you know, tomahawks with, like, rope. You know, they're using spears. They're using bow and arrows. Like, it made way more sense to have it fit in that setting. Um, and those protagonists worked. And the main protagonist was fantastic, Loved watching her act. I thought she was great. I thought she was uh, fun to watch, and I thought it was very well calculated. So this is one of my favorite movies of the year, Prey. Definitely go see it. It's on Hulu. Um, and also, I will say, it was well, it was the best movie in the series, in my opinion. And another thing I'll say is this. Uh, shout out to the director. He directed the pilot to uh, The Boys, 
and it's like the he made history. It's like the first movie with entirely Native American casting. I thought that was cool. So I'm a big fan. Big, big fan of Prey. We'll see it again very soon. Um, that one scene with the bear, you'll have to see it, but it, it just very, very good movie. And you, you love to see that. Like they, that series needed kind of the invigoration of that. And so I thought that was awesome. Um, McVeigh never alluded to Tommy John. That's not true at all. McVeigh never said he would get Tommy John surgery. Never. Yeah, I don't think any Rams fan wants Jimmy Garoppolo. Yep, pretty much. Knew that was going to happen, Joe. What up, Joe? I may be blown up. I don't know. All I'm saying is that your coach could have used his words better, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, I just, I don't, he never said anything about needing Tommy John surgery. Exactly. Yeah, it's uncommon because of his throwing motion. Sometimes he does this thing with it, like he he sidearms it. Do you know who else sidearmed the football? Kurt Warner. It's not unheard of. Mahomes does the same thing too. Like he goes sidearm. Yeah, I think Tutu is going to have a, a good year. Detroit, why do you still call him Statford? He's already proven you wrong. He won a Super Bowl his first year with the Rams. What's up, Brett? It is almost... I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Um, Probably something that has to do with that anti-vax thing. He kind of left a bad impression on a lot of uh, people around the league. So, I don't know, though. Big time. 100%. Exactly. Well, I feel better after they. Lord knows if Wolford ever had to take over, it's a wrap. I don't know about that. I don't think it's fair for us to say that. All we've ever seen is Wolford give handoffs or throw the ball when he has no offensive line and the backups are in, uh, you know, since Stafford got there. I saw him against the Giants. He threw the interception. He got hit while he was throwing, and he was throwing all the backups. So Wolford with the full starting cast would still be in the playoffs, I think. Yeah, not winning anything, but they they'll they'll play basketball in 2023. You're absolutely right. Um let's see. Powell was being used in the offense. That's cool. I am one of three thumbs up. Everyone else besides two people are selling out. <laughs> like you said, it was so serious. Why is Stafford throwing the damn football? Amen, Jake. Bam. That's all you need to know. Like, anybody still worried about Stafford? Don't be worried about Stafford. Just don't. That's fair. Yes, I did. I loved Prey. I was just saying that. Yeah, I I need everybody. If you're into action, go watch Prey after this on Hulu. It's 100% recommended by me. Yeah. Is Predators the one with uh, Adrian Brody? I think it is. It is. Okay. That was okay. I didn't think it was the worst. I didn't think it was the best. It was it was okay. Um but Prey I think just absolutely I don't know. I think Prey dominated everything that I've seen in the Predator series. Just saw Bullet Train today. Movies a lot of action, very very confusing. Um so Bullet Train was a little bit better than average. It's a lot of fun. It, it's a fun action comedy. I think a lot of the a lot of the complaints that people had was that it was really confusing and that there was too much comedy, which I think people didn't realize it was an action comedy. It is on the same level as the new movie uh, that just came out on Netflix, um, The Lost City. 
I think it literally had the same big three cast. Uh, they didn't have as big of roles, but you had um, Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum and Brad Pitt in, in those three in both movies. So I thought, it, like, think more like that. Obviously, it was way more gruesome and way more, like, action, but um, it was an action comedy, and I enjoyed it. I agree with that. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about, is that, like, Prey, it made more sense. Like, watching Arnold Schwarzenegger have to, like, outsmart the alien just felt kind of, like, out of place. It was like Michael Myers carrying a machine gun. It kind of takes the flair out of what Michael Myers is. Michael Myers is a stalking serial killer uh, who is the embodiment of evil and just doesn't die. Uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is, like, this military buff guy that always has his shirt off and he's got machine guns and he's always just like, you know, guns blazing. Like it made no sense for him to try to outsmart an alien. That wasn't his thing. So, you know, I still think the movie does well and I think it was good, but Prey was more realistic to what they were trying to sell. I think they, they definitely sold me on it. <laughs> Pete Carroll will lead the Seahawks to the Super Bowl, improve Russell Wilson as a system quarterback. Yeah, I don't know about that one. We had the best running back in football and best DT. We'll see. We'll see, Joannis. I I think uh, I think Tutu's in for a big year if they if they give him the opportunity. I'm very excited for him. Um, I'm very excited for the people that have already given up on him to uh, to watch him work can tell you that what's up sg yeah our mods are literally top notch top like l there cannot be better mods in the game because i never have to worry if i get spammed mods are on it like that you got julio in here i see you know how to mod you know i mean yeah our mods are great nolan's great let's see here Yeah, Prey is awesome. You're going to like it. Uh, opinion on him? I mean, he was a Laker, and I liked watching him. When he left, I thought he was kind of a jerk. I think what's misunderstood is that he doesn't get any blame or didn't get any blame for leaving and all that. I think it all was pinned on the kid, Kobe Bryant. But I think that a lot of that was Shaq. Um, I like Shaq more now, I think, personality-wise. But, yeah, I like Shaq. I mean, he's maybe the most dominant player ever. I mean, if you think about it, Shaq broke the game. Shaq broke the NBA. They had to add the three-second in the key rule. They had to add the reinforced breakaway rims because he would just destroy basketball rims and, and hoops. I mean, it was ridiculous. Uh, do the Cardinals have a strong start? Of, to the season last year pretty crazy how the Rams blew the Cardinals out of the building and Murray got exposed in the playoffs yeah I mean I think really it, it is exactly what the Cardinals are uh they're a team that look you know they get off to good starts Kyler Murray looks like the MVP the first half of the season and then the season wears on them it wears wears them down wears down Kyler Murray and at the end of the day I just don't think they're that impressive um you know I mean just go back it's not just Kyler it's also, uh, what's his face? The, uh, the coach, you know, um, totally blank on his name. Kingsbury, Cliff Kingsbury, you know, they just don't have a good record the second half of seasons. And so I don't think the Cardinals are going to be that good. I really don't. So do you think we get a Dodgers Yankees world series this year? I don't know. I kind of lean that it'll be either Yankees Mets or or I think it should be Yankees Dodgers I think those are the two best teams but I feel like it's gonna be like Yankees Mets or like Astros Astros Mets maybe I think it's gonna be one of those I, I there's only two teams in the the AL that I think I actually have a chance though just like there's only three teams in the NL but the problem is here here's what I'll say the Braves are interesting because while they're losing now they're going to get 
Ozzy Albies before the postseason. He'll be back. He's going to be crucial for them. Um, the Phillies are interesting because they went out and they got Noah Syndergaard. And on top of that, uh, Bryce Harper is going to be back healthy soon. So they're getting healthy. We'll see how it goes. Cardinals are intri- they're very intriguing because it looks like they're starting to surge. But I think really when it comes down to it, it's those three teams. It's the Dodgers, the Mets, and the Braves. Jake, any free agents available you think the Rams should look at other than o- Odell, of course? Just Odell. Not really curious about any other free agents, to be honest with you. You'd get Cole Beasley. You wouldn't be able to play in L.A., right? Wouldn't he have to be vaccinated? I don't know how it works. I don't live in L.A., so I don't know. But Will the Seahawks regret the Jam- – oh, they already do. They already do. Wasn't a good trade. Giving up two first-round picks for Jamal Adams was ridiculous. Um, Cole Measley. <laughs> Late hot take alert. Dune is a shitty movie. Yeah, I think Dune is such a slow burn that I just, I don't know. Because, like, you talk to somebody who loved Dune, and every time, at least for me, is like, oh, well, you just got to wait for for part two. And I'm like, we're talking about this movie, okay? Part two may add layers onto part one to make part one better. But Dune is relatively just a brutal slow burn that looks incredibly good. I mean, the the cinematics, the the cinematography, the CGI, it's fantastic. It's a beautiful-looking movie, but it's so boring. It takes forever to get going. By the time it does, they're like, yep, that's the end of the movie. And you're like, so I I don't know. I don't think they should have gone with two parts. They should have made it like a four-hour event, I thought, like Lord of the Rings type deal. But they didn't, so yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's a shitty movie, but I was not as impressed with it as other people were. He's an idiot. Uh, Cole Beasley, are you talking about? Thoughts on Clayton Kershaw? Uh, One of the best pitchers in the league. One of the best pitchers to ever do it. Phenomenal. Hall of Famer. Those are my thoughts on Kershaw. Yeah, I don't I don't know why it wasn't released in theaters, but I think they definitely missed the ball on that cuz it would have been amazing in theaters. I just the Statford name it just sounds bad. Like it doesn't even sound like a good nickname. Um in my opinion. Yeah, I'm reporting that person. Thank you for blocking their messages. I hate those so much. Not a top 10 player all time. I don't care what anyone says, uh, but he's phenomenal. He's the greatest shooter of all time. Um, And I think, you know, at times, he's he's a very interesting guy because he is the best shooter clearly of all time but i think this is somebody when he struggles people are a little bit quieter than other players that struggle uh but when he's on people are the loudest for steph curry i don't think anybody gets louder for no one gets more of a louder you know press ovation whatever than curry does when he's hot and i think it's cuz you know it's the flashiness of having a three point game That's fair. Shaq didn't take the game as seriously as he could have. Yeah, I agree with that. Definitely agree with that. I mean, he got overweight pretty quickly. It doesn't matter if they beat the Lakers or not. They haven't won anything. Like, the Lakers won a title. The Clippers don't win anything. 
Like the Clippers are the Mets, the Lakers are the Yankees. That's what they are. If the Mets don't win a World Series this year after all that spending, it's not going to look good. And you don't have Scherzer forever, you know? So it's, I mean, Mets are an older team. I don't think people realize that. But it's like the Clippers. I mean, if they don't win with this, then I don't care. That's the thing. The Lakers have won a title. The Clippers have not. <laughs> what did the Dodgers see in Gallo? Uh, well, I think it's easy to see stuff in Gallo. When you look at Joey Gallo, obviously that power is definitely there. It's not gone. It's there. We saw it with New York. We saw flashes. He just couldn't get it consistently. Um, and there's a lot of upside because if you think about this, Joey Gallo will be hitting against the shift this year and that's it. Next year, there's no shift. It's honestly one of the reasons why if they kept Gallo, I wouldn't have been totally against it because I think Gallo is going to be a lot better next year. His confidence is going to be flowing because the shift's going to be gone. The problem he did, the problem he had, the problem he made, the mistake he made, Remember, we talked about on the, the show before the season started, Joey Gallo in an interview basically was asked if he had to switch his uh, hitting, you know, would he be able to do that because of the shift? And he said, no, I'm not going to switch how I, I hit because of the shift. They shouldn't be allowed to shift. And that rubbed Yankee fans the wrong way, and I think it rubbed me the wrong way as well. Because, you know, like I said, I just watched the uh, the Derek Jeter documentary, The Captain, and I'm watching how he's explaining how he would do anything possible to win without cheating, of course, but anything possible. So later on in his career, when he's in his late 30s, and he's clearly over the hill, and he's not as good, do you know what Derek Jeter, what happens to Derek Jeter? Brian Cashman flat out tells him, hey, look, you're not you're not doing well enough. You got to get better at this and this and this. And Jeter did. I mean, he had some good seasons that people do not talk about. And it's kind of funny to me because when I look at Derek Jeter, you know, and let me be the first one to say Derek Jeter is not my favorite all time player. I understand he played for the Yankees, but it's not like a bias because I always, I was an A-Rod guy. I just didn't look at those two as, like, you know, rivals. J Jeter fans would be like, A-Rod sucks, he's a -Roid, he's a cheater, get him out of here. And I'd be like, why can't they both be here? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't understand the whole, oh, well, it has to be Jeter over A-Rod. I mean, A-Rod had the MVPs, you know. But here's the thing about Derek Jeter, okay? He was an honorary All-Star in 2014. I mean, he batted 256. His on-base percentage was barely over 300, okay? His OPS was 617. So he really was an all-star that year. He had four home runs. He had 145 games. That was it, right? That was his last year. It was more like he's an honorary all-star just like Albert Pujols. Guy's 40 years old. He's playing shortstop at 40 years old. Let's give him a little bit of a break. But what impresses me is this season in 2012, and the thing that sucks about Derek Jeter is that he actually ends up breaking his ankle. And that is really what ended his career. Because in 2012, guys, he led the league in plate appearances with 740. So this guy led off. He played 159 games at age 38 while playing shortstop. He had 216 hits. Okay. He had 15 home runs, 58 RBIs out of the leadoff hole. He bad 316 with a 362 on base percentage, a 429 slugging, and had a 791 OPS. Not bad for a guy that doesn't hit home runs. So when you look at it, he was seventh in MVP. He's 38 years old. And this comes after, let's see here, 2000, what was it? The year he had 270, I think it was. He was told. 2010, age 36, he was told he has to start making changes. He has to get better, and he did. He got better. He was hitting 270, and now all of a sudden he moves 270 back up to 297, 316. He was making a lot of errors in the field. He cuts down the errors. He got better, you know? And that's the thing. Going back to the old Joey Gallo thing, this is the analogy and why I brought it up, is because Joey Gallo 
after just watching what Derek Jeter had to do at an older age, Joey Gallo, age 28, will not change his swing. How do you think New York fans, having seen Derek Jeter go through everything, how do you think they're going to respond? Are they going to be like, yeah, that's totally fine. Joey Gallo can do what he wants. Or are they going to boo him? They're going to boo him. That's what happened. And I saw Michael Kay getting a lot of shit because of what he said about Joey Gallo. Look, sometimes I, I sound like I'm anti-media. I'm not. I'm anti-making false narratives, which happens a lot. But one thing that bothered me was the reaction to Michael K saying that Joey Gallo was a failure and giving his honest opinion about what his issue was with Joey Gallo. The whole woe was me approach. His interview, how he basically kind of made it out to be like the Yankee fans brought it down. Like, as he said, he's like, no, 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 no. If, if you hit home runs, if you hit 40 home runs like you were brought here to do, they wouldn't have booed you. If you didn't bat 159 in 501 plate appearances and had the literal worst batting average in the history of the Yankees in those 501 at-bats, people wouldn't have booed you. You got booed because you failed here. You played poorly here. I feel for you, but come on. That was his point. And there are people like, People like Michael Kay are just, they don't understand. This is dangerous behavior. You can't. He's critiquing. He had every right. I mean, can you not critique players anymore? Are we really that charm and ultra soft as a community now? Not our community, but outside. I mean, yeah, it seems that way. My God. But the thing that's funny is you have Mr. Ace Garrett Cole, who gives up six runs in the first inning, but he's been pretty good aside from that. And everyone's on his ass. But we're defending Joey Gallo for getting too critiqued, for getting too hated on. The guy bad 159 in the major leagues. I remember when the worst hitter in the lineup would bat like 230. Tops. That would be like the worst. Where did these 100 batting averages come from? That's what I'd like to know. Where the hell did that come from? That came from overnight. Now it's acceptable to bat below uh, ridiculous. I'm hoping for that too. 100 stream likes and I'll buy a Gallo Dodger jersey. Oof. Thanks for stopping by, Joannis. Have a good one. Dune suffers from Star Trek 1 movie syndrome. LOL. <laughs> Feels that way. Who are quarterbacks that are playing for their job this year? I think all the quarterbacks in the AFC East are playing for their job other than Prescott. Any others you can think of? Good good question. Quarterbacks that are playing for their job. Let's go through the AFC West. Uh, everyone in, in Seattle. I mean, you have Geno Smith is a favorite right now. You have uh, Drew Locke. They're playing for their job. Kyler Murray's not. He just got paid. Trey Lance, I don't think he's playing for his job. Okay, so... Then, obviously, the Rams, Stafford's not playing for his job. So then you look at NFC East, like you said. Daniel Jones, yes. Carson Wentz, yes. Jalen Hurts seems to always be looking over his shoulder, so yes. And Dak, no, because he got paid. So then you look at the AFC North, and you're like, okay, Chicago, Justin Fields, no, I can't see that. Maybe if he has, like, a, a trust, like an absolute atrocious season, and they have a chance to get, you know, Bryce, uh, I'm blanking, but... Um, you know, if they have a a chance to get, you know, the Alabama kid whose name it totally escapes me. Love the guy, too. I don't know why. I just totally forgot his name. And uh, I'm never going to remember the other guy. But in Ohio State, if they have a chance to get those two quarterbacks, okay, maybe that changes things. But the Bears, I don't know. That seems a little harsh. Jared Goff is. He, he has to, right? Jared Goff's definitely playing for his first job. Uh, and then, what? Aaron Rodgers, no. Kirk Cousins, maybe. But I think Kirk Cousins has been really good. So uh, aside from that, then you have in the South, Brady's not. Brady's literally – Tampa Bay will keep paying him. Brady could play at 50. He could be an average quarterback at best, and they will not stop paying him. Uh, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, thank you. I don't know. I can never remember C.J. Stroud's name. Bryce Young, I never have forgotten before. So that was kind of annoying. Uh, but Brady, yeah. They'll, they'll pay him until he's 55. They're not going to let him go. But anyway, so he's not playing for his job. Then you look at the Saints. I think Jameis Winston is. I think that's definitely fair. 
Uh, and I think he's going to have a good year. Um, who else? We got the Panthers. They're all playing for their job. Whoever gets the job is playing for their job. Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold. Um, you know, and then the Falcons. I mean, Mariota's definitely playing for his job because guess what? They got Desmond Ritter, who's just sitting there and the, waiting in the winds. I mean, wouldn't be surprised if he took over if uh, Mariota struggled. Then the AFC, you got the AFC East. Josh Allen, no. Zach Wilson, no. Uh, Mac Jones, no. Tua Tagovailoa, absolutely yes. If the Miami Dolphins suck this year, Tua will not be the starting quarterback. Mark my damn words. They will draft somebody. Uh, or they will acquire somebody in some capacity. But Tua will not be the starter after this year if he sucks. Uh, then you look at the AFC uh, South, right? So you got the Colts, Matt Ryan. Not really. I think they would stick with Matt Ryan as long as he, you know, continues to play. Um, the Texans, Davis Mills, unfortunately, isn't going to have a job. Like, they're going to be picking early on in the draft, and they're going to get either Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. So, unfortunately, Davis Mills can play as great as he wants. I think they're moving on, but I like Davis Mills. Um, then you have the Titans. Tannehill is 100% playing for his job. End of story. Trevor Lawrence, we'll see. New regime, if he sucks, I mean, they have a lot of weapons there. That's two years in a row. You can't make the, the excuse for him if he sucks and, you know, uh, what's-his-face isn't there anymore. Um, Urban Meyer. So I'd say he's playing for his job. Not in, in a sense like he absolutely – but I could see them be like, eh, we'll trade you away and try to get somebody good. I don't know. If he sucks, that that's what I'm talking about. So then you look at the AFC North and you got the Steelers and I mean, Pickett, you know, he doesn't have any pressure on him, but Trubisky absolutely is. Lamar Jackson's not, they love him. They're going to be signing him to a deal. They're not going to let him go. Okay. Then you have the Browns, Deshaun Watson, you paid him. So, I mean, he, I don't know how long he'll be suspended. He should be suspended for the entire year and next year, but he won't be. So, I don't know. And then the Bengals, Joe Burrow, no. He's not playing for his job. So then you look at the AFC West. Derek Carr, yes, he is. He is playing for his job. They just signed him. If Derek Carr sucked this year with everything they just put around him, he hasn't done enough in his career to justify keeping him around. If he has a bad year, he's gone. They'll figure out a way to move him. There's plenty of teams that would take Derek Carr. Wouldn't be surprised. Like, if if the Jaguars had a year where Trevor Lawrence sucked and Derek Carr sucked for the Raiders, wouldn't be surprised if they swapped. But anyway, uh, Broncos, Russell Wilson, no. Uh, Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, no. And Justin Herbert, no. So those are... Those are that. Um, came just in time to block them bots. LOL, what up? <laughs> you just come in here and you're like, tsh, 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 like, <laughs> what's up, Alex? AFC playoff picture is so intriguing this year. It is. Uh, Joey Gallo strikes out a lot, uh, but he's got a lot of power. Juan Soto. Well, I'll say this about Juan Soto. Everyone keeps telling me he's the best hitter since Ted Williams. But Ted Williams, I'm going to look it up now, but I can't recall Ted Williams ever having a year where he batted below 300. He had one year, and he was age 40, and he had 254. Can we stop calling Juan Soto the best hitter since Ted Williams? Because I just don't think that's fair. I think Soto's great. He's 23 years old. He's going to be really damn good. But he's not the best hitter since Ted Williams. Here's Ted Williams. By the way, missed three years because of military service. So he played 19 years. He would have played 22. This is Ted Williams. 327, 344, 406, uh, 356, 342, 343, 369, 343, 317, 318, 400, 407, 345, 356, 345, 388, 328, 354, or 254, and 316. So he had one year where he batted below 300. 
No. His career batting average is 344. His uh his career on base percentage is 482. His career slugging percentage is 634 and his career OPS is 1.116. No. Soto is not the next Ted Williams. There's never been a Ted Williams. Ted Williams is insane, okay? Ted Williams is unbelievable. What he did, I mean, there's one year he played what? He played in 103 games one year and struck out 27 times. Now, you want to get an impre- impressive strikeouts. Tony Gwynn was just on nut. But Ted Williams had, this is his, okay, this is his OPS each year. Over one, 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 over one. And that one year where he's 40 years old, 791, and then over one again his last year. Are we serious? Are we serious? Again, Juan Soto is great. He's 23 years old. But Ted Williams had one year in which he didn't hit 300. Juan Soto has 292, 282. He hit 351 in 2020. 2021, he hit 313. Then 2022, he, he's batting what? 249. So he's already not hit 300 in three seasons. So no. He's not Ted Williams. He's not the next Ted Williams. He's Juan Soto, and he's going to be great. But I don't, I don't get that level of hype. His OPS is 967. That's great. It's not over one. I mean, Ted Williams, his average season was 37 home runs, 130 RBIs, 188 hits, and he bad 344, average 482 on base, three, 634 slugging. I mean, this dude is just incredible. Absolutely incredible. And he hit 2,654 hits, so he didn't get 3,000. Why didn't he get 3,000, you ask? Well, let's look. Because 1952, he got hurt. Missed like almost the entire season, and he missed 43, 44, and 45 due to military service. So he clearly would have been over 3,000. He was literally in the MVP race like every year. Dude is a 19 time All Star, five time player of the year, two time MVP, six time batting title, two time triple crown winner. Unreal. He's not the next Ted Williams. So I don't know if there'll ever be another Ted Williams. Period. Oh, uh, I definitely believe in that. Who would you bet the next big Ram star acquisition is, whether it be trade or free agency? It could be next season or after. Um, That's a good question. I'm going to say Derwin James next year in free agency. Remember I said that. Yankees have won titles. Or Lakers have won titles. Why do I keep saying Yankees? God, I'm talking about all my teams. It's all conjumbled. I like Trubisky. I don't think he's as bad as other people say. I just rewatched James Gunn, The Suicide Squad. So good rewatching it. Oh, yeah. James Gunn did a great job with that. Another hot take. Kenyon Drake will be the odd man out of the Raiders' backfield. Jacobs, White, Abdullah, Drake out. Wow. Okay. All right. I mean, we saw we saw the Hall of Fame game, folks. Zamir White can can flat out run. He's good. Like I I like him a lot. Abdullah looks like he's got a good fit there. Um, and then Jacobs. I mean, I don't know why he was playing, but he obviously, of course. I think there's a real possibility we have another Super Bowl winning season. Matthew Stafford will opt to retire for the sake of his health, and I wouldn't hold it against him one bit. Maybe. I think he'll play through the whole contract, but that's just me. I don't follow baseball, but based off your streams, Joey Gallo sounds like a jerk. Who would you compare him to in the NFL? 
I don't want to, like, I don't think he's a bad guy. Uh, I just think, you know, he's just not, he, he's not as much of a hard worker as a Jeter, you know? Um, and he has that one trait that you fall in love with, the home run ball, but he isn't, and he's a good fielder, but, I mean, he's just not a great contact hitter. So, I guess in that sense, if I had to compare him to an NFL player, um, hmm, that's a good good question, actually. I mean, in a sense, he's kind of like Jimmy Garoppolo. In a sense. Because, like, Garoppolo... He's really good at running the system, but he struggles in like every other area. So I don't, I don't know. It's hard to compare him to anybody, but maybe Garoppolo. Yeah, I don't know. That's tough. That that's tough. I think he'll have number 13, if I'm being honest. Thank you, Got Him Running. I appreciate that. I try. I try to keep it as high quality as I can. Growing on... Uh, it, it's crazy. If you guys don't know, I'm actually growing on TikTok right now. Um, at JK Boga on TikTok. And, you know, I'm trying to make it, like, all sports entertainment. But, really, I just... I started just posting about the trade deadline. Then the Yankee stuff really took off. And now it's like I have 500 followers in two weeks. And I have almost 50,000 likes. And the views are insane. You know? So it's like I've already had... I mean... I had like 200... I think it's like over 200K views. I probably have over a million total views in two weeks. It's crazy. Anyone can grow on TikTok. I'll make that part of my course when I drop it, <clears throat> but uh, I'm definitely going to try to help people grow on TikTok if they're interested. Uh, not that I'm super, super popular on it, but it, I think it's ex especially easy if you're somebody that, you know, you can use highlights. So, like, I use, like, for instance, I'll use highlights of, like, a baseball player while I'm talking about said player. Um, I think that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. It, well, and that's the thing. I think Baker would have been a Ram if they were truly worried about Matthew Stafford because that made too much sense. Louis Cyrus. That sounds familiar. I mean, it, I don't think he's available unless they just put him on trade waivers. Yeah, I mean, I I would take him, but uh, the tw he's twenty five years old. The twins love him. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. I don't think they're taking a gamble because the Thunderbolts is going to matter. It, it's going to have something to do with what they're doing. So they never do anything if it doesn't have any sort of impact. Like, let's be honest here. We can complain about when they released Black Widow all we want. But Black Widow was more about introducing Yelena Belova and introducing, in the post credit scene, introducing um, Madam Hydra to the next level of that, you know, that military saga, essentially. The Armor Wars part of it, you know, the Falcon Winter Soldier, that was all connected. So everything is released for a reason. Everything connects. It's what's so great about the MCU. Everything has a purpose. Typical me if I those piranhas hate their hate there's no drama in Hollywood with the Rams. It's been a while for them since the golf fiasco. It's true. Yes. I think it's the best Predator movie, period. Um I loved it and it, I think it made a ton of sense. I love the Comanche Indian tribe that they used. I think it made a lot of sense. It was more believable. Yeah. Yeah, 19-time All-Star. No big deal. What's up, GOAT? Ernest Jones going to be balling out this year, future star? I think so as well. I think it's really going to help him being around Bobby Wagner. Big time. They needed that.
Horror movie icons, uh, the GOAT over there, Michael Myers. Um, let's see, Michael Myers, we got, hmm, I'm going to say Pinhead from Hellraiser. That's two. And we got, might be cheating a little bit, but definitely going to go with Patrick Bateman. And then... Hmm. Mr. Boogie, the ghoul from Sinister. And number five is going to be Leatherface. I really do like Freddy. I'm not as high on Jason, but yeah, those are those are mine. Will Aaron make the Hall of Fame? I'm guessing not, because if he gets in, they will have to let Bonds, Clemens, McGuire, Sosa in. The thing that's good for him is that he apologized. He, he admitted he did roids and apologized. That's a good question. I think A-Rod is 100% deserving of being a Hall of Famer, regardless if he did steroids or not, um, because he didn't do steroids his whole career. He actually did only six years out of the 22 he played. Um, not saying that's great, but, you know, I'm not saying it's the worst. So let's see. Uh, 2022 Baseball Hall of Fame voting. Um, let's look here. Okay, so here's the thing that ruins any argument, and I honestly think the Baseball Hall of Fame was ruined. The prestige of it, the luster of it wore off. Because how the hell, how in God's creation do you put David Ortiz in first ballot? David Ortiz, Hall of Famer, but I don't think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And the idea, like Barry Bonds got 66%. You need, I think, 75% to get in. Ortiz gets 77 Who the hell is voting David Ortiz over Barry Bonds? Like, what fruitcake thinks David Ortiz is more of a Hall of Famer than Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Scott Rowland, freaking Gary Sheffield, Alex Rodriguez? I mean, it's just so stupid. Like, the, just these idiots run the asylum. And it's, um, you know, I, here's my thoughts, okay? David Ortiz, I don't have an issue with personally, but this is where the media comes around because the baseball writers vote him in. Well, guess who was loved by the baseball writers? Not Bonds, not Clemens, not Schilling, obviously not Schilling, not A-Rod, not Sheffield, not Manny Ramirez. Nope, David Ortiz. And here's my thought process on David Ortiz. You ready for this? Ortiz is the only one, the only one, of all those names, even though we already know most of them took steroids, he's the only one that tested positive. Like, are you kidding me? Ortiz tested positive. I just, I don't understand that. He tested positive for steroids in 2009. How is he, he gets a pass because he was a nice guy? I mean, come on. It's a load of shit. And that's why I just, I think it makes the Hall of Fame look bad. You have a guy who has a 55.3 war. By the way, all these people, these seam heads, want to use analytics. They want to use wins above replacement. But explain to me this. Wins above replacement. You ready for this? For all the guys that were on the list, the voting. And I'll give you their percentage. And none of them made it except for Ortiz. Here's everyone over David Ortiz and wins above replacement. You ready for this? This is genius. This is hilarious to me. Barry Bonds, 162.8. But he did steroids. He didn't do it with the pod. Uh, he didn't do it with the Pirates. He was a Hall of Famer with the Pirates. All right, move on. Roger Clemens. I mean, he's one of the greatest pitchers of all time, but he did steroids. He didn't do it his whole career. 139.2 wins above replacement. All right, Alex Rodriguez. Uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. Nope, David Ortiz is. He had a 34.3% of the vote. Oh, by the way, Alex Rodriguez, 117.6 war. But he did steroids. Not his whole career. Again, he was still a Hall of Famer with regardless of the steroids. All right, let's move on. Kurt Schilling. Yeah, Kurt Schilling's a dick. Let's just call it like it is. He's not a good dude. I, I would not want to get coffee with this guy. I also don't drink coffee. But that's not the point. Point is, 79.5 war. According to your analytical seam heads, he would be a Hall of Famer. But, uh, nope. 
he did steroids or some shit. I don't know. I think he just pissed off people, and that's why he's not in. But he got uh, 58.6% of the vote. Scott Rowland, dude, was an absolute star at third. One of the best defensive third basemen of all time. He's phenomenal. Scott Rowland, 100%, should be in the Hall of Fame. He batted 281, 364, 490 with an 855 OPS. Okay. Oh, well, he didn't have the home runs. I don't give a shit. Okay. This guy was very, very good. And, of course, if you're using war, if you're using your wins above replacement, he has 70.1. No no Hall of Fame. He actually had uh, a whopping 63.2%, so he still didn't make it on his fifth try. Sixth try for Manny Ramirez, who was teammates with Mr. First Ballot, David Ortiz. Manny Ramirez had a 69.3 war. He had more home runs than Ortiz, more RBIs than Ortiz, and played nearly 400 games less than Ortiz. He had a 281 batting average to Ortiz's 286. He had a 364 on base percentage to Ortiz's 380. And he had a 490 slugging percentage to Ortiz's 552. Now, Ortiz had a better career in a sense. Oh, I'm sorry. I was actually looking at Scott Rowland. Oh, nope, scratch that. There's literally no, absolutely no reason for Manny Ramirez to not be a Hall of Famer. Okay, let's go back. Ready for this? Manny Ramirez, 69.3 war to David Ortiz's 55.3. Okay, games played. Manny Ramirez didn't play anywhere near as many games as Ortiz, nearly 100 games fewer than Ortiz. Manny Ramirez had more runs. Manny Ramirez had more hits. Manny Ramirez had more home runs, RBIs. Manny Ramirez had more stolen bases. Manny Ramirez had more walks. Manny Ramirez bad 312 to 286. Manny Ramirez bad 411 on base percentage to 380 for Ortiz. Three, uh, 585 slugging to Ortiz's 552. And he had a 996 OPS to Ortiz's 931. Manny Ramirez, sixth straight year, doesn't get you know in the Hall of Fame. He has a 289 uh, percent voting percentage. Ortiz has a 77.9 and he gets in on his first ballot. Explain to me how that makes any sort of sense that Manny Ramirez is not a Hall of Famer. And again, this isn't a New York Yankee fan arguing that a Red Sox belongs in the Hall of Fame. It doesn't matter about bias. I just want what's right. And the Baseball Hall of Fame makes me irked because it doesn't make any sense. You could say over and over and over again, it's all about war. Oh my God, wins above replacement. I just told you, and if you don't even believe in war, there is not one stat that would prove that Manny Ramirez doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame and that Ortiz does over him. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's the sixth time, and he's gotten 28% of the vote. You're telling me Manny Ramirez isn't a Hall of Famer? I mean, it's exactly like I said. Well, we didn't like Manny Ramirez. Baseball writers, he, he offended us. All right, well, let's get less soft with the baseball writers. You got 392 baseball writers, 296 need to get elected in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Maybe get better 394 baseball writers. I'm not saying everybody is a, a lame duck, but I mean, come on. Most of these people are soft as hell. It's why Manny Ramirez is in the Hall of Fame. Get a grip. But anyway, uh, moving on, Andrew Jones. So Andrew Jones, you know, honestly, wasn't as good as Ortiz in my opinion. Okay, doesn't have more hits, doesn't have more RBIs, doesn't have more, like, whatever. But Andrew Jones, according to, you know, the war, wins above replacement, 62%, or 62.7. It's higher than Ortiz. All right, next, Todd Helton. That was his f fifth time, by the way, Andrew Jones. Uh, oh, by the way, what's even better? Andrew Jones had a higher voting percentage than Manny Ramirez. Like, make this make sense. Because it doesn't. All right, Todd Helton. He had 52%. He's getting there. It's his fourth time. Let's see if he's deserving. 61.8 war. We have, okay, he had 2,519 hits, so a little bit below Manny. He had way fewer home runs than Manny Ramirez. He had more, uh, he had few, way fewer RBIs than Manny Ramirez. He batted 316. He had a better on base percentage as well by a tick. He didn't have as good of slugging. He batted uh, 953. Uh, funny enough, that's actually higher than uh, Ortiz with that OPS. But uh, he is ahead of Manny Ramirez by a lot. All right, let's move on to Gary Sheffield, who, by the way, Gary Sheffield belongs in the Hall of Fame, okay? He's in the top 200 in war, and the guy 
you know, he was really good too. He hit 509 home runs. He hit 1,676 RBIs. He had 253 stolen bases. You know, he batted 292, 393, 554, 514 uh, slashed, and uh, he had 907 OPS. So if you look at, you know, him versus David Ortiz, I mean, I think, honestly, Ortiz is probably, you know, he's potentially a little bit better, but he's not a lot better. He's not a lot better. And Sheffield was consistent no matter where he went. Sheffield got 40% of the vote in his eighth time on the ballot. Why is Sheffield not a Hall of Famer? Like, explain that to me. Okay, but I'm still I'm still hung up on the fact Manny Ramirez got 28% of the vote. What the hell are we doing? Oh, well, he was mean to me. Oh, my God. Get, get over yourself. I don't care how this guy treated you. I don't care if dude is the biggest asshole on the planet to you when you, you know, interview him. If you're not voting for what is right, you don't belong on the voting committee. You just don't. It's bullshit. All right, let's move on. Andy Pettit. His fourth time on the ballot, he got 10% of the vote. He's got a higher war than David Ortiz. 60.2. Okay? Andy Pettit, he had 256 wins to 153 losses. He had 385 ERA. Uh, Look, I'm a Yankee fan. I love Andy Pettit. I don't think Andy Pettit's a Hall of Famer. I think Andy Pettit was very good, okay? I think he's in the Hall of Very Good, and he's a Yankee legend, but he is not a Hall of Famer. So I'm not going to argue that Andy Pettit should have been in the Hall of Fame. 10% 10 of the vote, I appreciate the people that voted for him. Would I vote for him if I'm trying to do what's right? No, because I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. And I wouldn't use bias, something that these voters should actually know. All right, Bobby Abreu, his third time on the list. Loved Abreu, played for the Yankees, he played for the Phillies. I believe he played for the Dodgers, too. Uh, he had 288 home runs. He had 400 stolen bases, 291 batting average, 395 on base percent, 475 slugging. He had an 870 OPS. Is he better than Ortiz? I don't know. I don't think so, but they're different players. Um, he hit more at the top of the lineup, so he had a lot fewer RBIs than Ortiz. He also wasn't the power hitter Ortiz was. But once again, he has a higher war than Ortiz. So wins above replacement. Bobby Abreu has a higher wins above replacement than David Ortiz. We move on to Mark Burley. Uh, Mark Burley, 214 to 160. He had an ERA of 381. Again, good pitcher, but I just don't think that this guy was amazing by any stretch. I, I think... You know, Burley with the strikeouts, he had a little bit more, I believe, than, uh, let's see here. Mark Burley had, no, he had fewer strikeouts than Pettit. Pettit had uh, 2,400, Burley had 1,800. So when looking at that, I don't know. But Burley still had a better war than David Ortiz, okay? Then you look at Sammy Sosa. Sosa's war isn't that great. Uh, It's at 58.6, still higher than David Ortiz. Um, and Sammy Sosa had 18% of the vote his 10th time on the ballot. Sammy Sosa cheated, no doubt. 609 home runs. He took steroids. He had 273 for his career, 344 on base percentage, 534 slugging, 878 on base, uh, uh, OPS. But is Sammy Sosa still a Hall of Famer? You bet your ass he is. Sammy Sosa is a Hall of Famer. So if you don't want to put him in, like, all right, whatever. But, I mean, if you want to put the the the... Uh, steroid users in an asterisk part of the Hall of Fame, fine. But the fact that you're not allowing them in is just stupid. All right, let's move on. Tim Hudson, his second year. Tim Hudson had 222 wins. He had 133 losses. He had, let's see here, how many strikeouts? He had 2,000 strikeouts. Tim Hudson was the Hall of Very Good, but no, he does not belong in the Hall of Fame. Still at a higher war than David Ortiz. We move on to Jeff Kent. He's there for his ninth time, uh, notably with the Dodgers, I believe with the Padres. Uh, Might have been with the Giants as well. 377 home runs. Uh, he had two, uh, 2,461 hits. He batted 290, 356, and 500. He had an 855 OPS. Is he better than Ortiz? I don't know. Defensively, he was because Ortiz didn't do shit defensively. He was a DH because he couldn't play first base uh, and he couldn't even play first base. So even when he wasn't a DH, he was playing first base, which isn't that valuable of a position. Uh, So Jeff Kent was a really good defensive guy. Um, Is he better than Ortiz? Arguably, I think he, he might be if you factor in his defense. But again, higher ward than David Ortiz. So what does that mean, folks? That means 
that the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2022 decided to vote for the guy who had the fourth most home runs, the 16th highest war. Uh, I, I don't I don't get it. OK, I, I just I don't get it. 22. All right. This is David Ortiz in a nutshell. 22nd in runs, seventh in hits, fourth in RBIs, 17th in stolen bases, 17th in war, seventh in walks. Ninth in batting average, eighth in on base percentage, third in slugging, fourth in OPS. I, I don't understand. As far as games played, sixth. He's not the best in any category of the guys that were on the ballot, and he gets in first ballot. I mean, does that not take the luster off of first ballot Hall of Famer? I, I don't know. I. I like I said, I'm not trying to be a jerk about Ortiz. I like him. I, I genuinely think, like, I used to like him more. Honestly, this kind of made me upset because it just kind of goes to show you, you have to kiss the media's ass in order for them to vote for you. And that's just not what it should be. Barry Bonds is the goat of the sport. I don't care what anyone says. Barry Bonds was the best player of all time, in my opinion. He should be in. Did he take steroids? Yes. But was he a Hall of Famer before he did? Also, yes. I mean, he has a career over one OPS. Not anybody on the ballot has that. He's just shy of 3,000 hits. He actually doesn't have 3,000. The only guy that has 3,000 on this list is A-Rod, and he only had 34.3% of the vote. I mean, we have a Hall of Fame in which A-Rod came in 10th in voting. His first year on the ballot, 10th. May Ramirez, 12th. I mean, I don't know, folks. I don't know. It, it's it's only getting worse. Pete Rose is in the Hall of Fame. He's the all-time hits leader. That is believable, by the way. Oh, boy. <laughs> Josh Norman. I like Josh Norman. I agree. And that's a really good point. What did China do to me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love Mookie because he does everything. He's a true five tool player. So does not a five tool player either. That's another thing. I think that's giving Joey Gallo too much credit. Betts is awesome. I mean, probably the Clippers, but I mean, it's because half the league makes the NBA playoffs now. So it's not really fair top five movies of all time top five marvel movies of all time um let's see i think i have it here maybe not on my ipad but gonna bring it up now on letterboxd made a list so i want to make sure it's accurate to my list okay Top five Marvel movies, No Way Home, Avengers Infinity War, Far From Home, Avengers Endgame, and Multiverse of Madness. Those are my top five. Iron Man. He is. Elizabeth Olsen, but I love Chris. Disneyland. Hoping the Thunderbolts can become... Icon, don't know which word to say with the fan base. Yeah, I feel that. Um, I'd like to hang with Stafford. Actually, I'd like to hang with OBJ. I think that'd be fun. Appreciate that, SG. Uh, very hyped about 2-2. Two -two. We'll see about Terrell Lewis, but I feel good about both of them. I don't know if I agree with that. Um, If I could attend Super Bowl 57, I mean, I'd probably take... 
my brother, my dad, and it would be a toss up between Alexis and my best friend Tyler. So, <laughs> uh, saturated Hall of Fame truth by Jake. Yeah, it is. You're welcome. It's bothered me for a long time. You guys know I've posted videos about it. It's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. Baseball writers are just like, yeah, I'm just going to kiss this guy's ass because he was nice to me. Like, no, that's not how it goes, bro. I just literally broke it down for you. Ortiz got 307 out of 394 votes. That's insane. He's the only one that tested positive. And regardless of that, even if you want to throw that away, he doesn't have that high of a war. It's 16th among the entire uh, you know, list of, you know, ballot Hall of Famers, whatever. He literally is not first in any category. While A-Rod is first in hits, A-Rod's second in runs, A-Rod's second in home runs, A-Rod's first in RBIs, A-Rod's sixth in stolen bases, A-Rod's fourth in walks, A-Rod's fourth in batting average, A-Rod's seventh in on-base percentage, A-Rod's fourth in slugging, a-Rod has, uh, he's fifth in OPS, and he's not. But then you have Bonds, who's also not in the Hall of Fame. First in runs on the ballot, second in hits, first in home runs, second in RBIs, first in stolen bases. But hey, he can't be first in stolen bases. He took steroids. Steroids make you big. There's no way he has more stolen bases than Carl Crawford and Jimmy Rollins and Omar Vizquel. That's not possible. You must be talking about a different Barry Bonds. Nope. It is possible because it shows you. All these people just use this term, five-tool player. They have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Juan Soto isn't a five-tool player. Mike Trout's a five-tool player. Jordan Alvarez is not a five-tool player. Aaron Judge is not a five-tool player as much as I love him. Five tools means you need to steal bases too. And that's something Barry Bonds did very well. 514. More than Carl Crawford. Yep, believe it or not, more than Carl Crawford. All right, let's 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 try to catch up here. Baseball Hall of Fame is a joke. It's become that way. People saying Yachty isn't a Hall of Famer. Is yeah, I mean... You know, people are going to look at all that, like the, oh, he didn't have a good war and all that. Yadier Molina is absolutely a Hall of Famer. Anybody that's watched him knows he's a Hall of Famer. Defensive apparently doesn't actually matter. Like, we, we use defense to discredit Derek Jeter. That's the only time we use defense, I noticed. The, isn't it funny? The only time anybody uses defense is to credit Derek Jeter. It's to basically explain that Derek Jeter is the most overrated player of all time. Derek Jeter would be nothing if he was on the Cleveland Indians. I don't give a shit. He was on the Yankees his whole career. I mean, that's what happened. And he was damn good, too. He won five titles. Like, come on. Anyway. Um, yeah, I I mean, I, I, like, I understand he took steroids. I understand his face blew up like a, a bowling ball uh, over time, and he got thick because of steroids. But still, he was a Hall of Famer. Yeah, it's bad. Genius, right? Didn't Nolan Ryan have, like, 4,000 strikeouts? I, I know the typical thing is, you know, oh, well, if you get 3,000 strikeouts, you're, you know, it's guaranteed to make the Hall of Fame. He pitched from, here, here's the thing also, just to make sure everyone understands, Nolan Ryan played 27 years. 27 years. Nolan Ryan... His career ERA is 319, despite the fact he pitched at age 46. Nolan Ryan at age 45 had 372 ERA. Nolan Ryan at age 44 had 291. Nolan Ryan struck out 203 batters at age 44. The year before that, 232. The year before that, 301. He had multiple seasons in which he struck out over 300 batters, which is insane. And by the way... Nope, not 4,000. He had 5,714 strikeouts. But yeah, not a first ballot Hall of Famer. Why would he be, right? Not unanimous. Yeah, he was a first ballot. Not unanimous, though, is what I meant to say. Genius. Yeah, Sherman's one of the greatest corners to ever do it. He definitely belongs in the Hall of Fame.
Um, they would never pay anybody money to play running back ever again because the Todd Gurley situation, they won't go back and pay money for that position. So they're not getting Kareem Hunt. And he's just sitting out because he wants a contract. It's not like he's going to get traded. Roger Clemens was also a Hall of Famer before Rhodes. Rhodes, it's a joke. He didn't get in. Absolutely. Pete Rhodes should be in the Hall of Fame too. Absolutely. That's fair. Um. Well, I don't know about that. I, I, I don't know about that, Joe. I mean, here's here's my thing, okay? That is a very reactive statement. Not trying to crap on you, my friend, but that, that is a very reactive, recency bias-driven statement. Uh, LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love might have been better than that. Um, here's the thing, okay? LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh is better than that. Uh, Michael Jordan, Sky Pippen, Dennis Robin. Yeah, okay, that's that's great. Uh, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Monty Ginobili, arguably the best. You got Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and James Worthy. I would take over that. Um, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and Clay Thompson is better than that. You know, as much as I don't like Kevin Durant, um, Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, arguably. You know, Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish, arguably. So. I don't agree with that, no. I wouldn't say they're the best trio. They're one of the best trios ever. They're not the best trio, I would say, since uh, since MJ, Pippen, and Rodman. That is a hot take. I respect the hot take. I just I don't agree with it. As he should be. I mean, Mariano Rivera is the most dominant pitcher ever. Like, he, he'd he come in and the door was closed. Yeah, I mean, he gave up, you know, he had a couple blown saves here and there. But, I mean, for the most part, he was as good as you can be. Good question. I really don't know what to expect. I don't know how big his role will be. Um, It will be interesting, though, because if they're, you know, if, if, Van Jefferson doesn't play. He has the most experience out of the guys that will be vying for that role. So, yeah, I don't know. I think people are too quick to give up on him because this guy had Super Bowl experience, like his rookie year. You don't just give up on a guy like that. Oh, yeah, I know. It's so stupid. Yeah, of course. Most of them are. Yeah, he had 5,000 plus strikeouts. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> Uh, Jake ran counter. Oh, we're at three. Okay, good to know. Pirates Barry Bonds, a special player, would have gone down as one of the goats, whether he took PEDs or not. Boom, there you go. I'm a little worried about staff. This is a baseball pitching issue in his elbow. We'd be lost without him. I'm not. He wouldn't be throwing if it was actually like a problem. Baseball reference doesn't use framing statistics, but fan graphs does. Yachty was like 55 career F war. Defense deserves to be a Hall of Famer. I agree. Scott Rowland was too, and he doesn't get credit, and it bothers me. Looks a little weird, but I don't hate it. I don't know. Hopefully. Peterson's a good player. I was surprised he didn't get moved at the deadline. The Giants are the worst team since uh, the second half started. I think they're like, what, 3-12 and 12 at this point. So yeah, it looks like they might have wanted to trade him and, and rode on and, and didn't get anything done. McVay wants him back. That's about all I got, unfortunately. No, I'm not really interested in those type of shows. I used to watch American Idol back in the day. We had Elliot Yamin. I remember him singing uh, Somebody to Love during the Queen Week, which is my favorite week of any American Idol. Um, I was a big fan of uh, David Cook. I was a big fan of Chris Daughtry. Those are the ones that I remember. But I used to watch American Idol. That was about it. It was way back when. I didn't watch it like after. Simon Cowell was like my favorite, so when he left, I didn't give any type of shit towards American Idol. 
I totally missed the donation. I am so sorry about that, Matthew. It's so weird. I saw it initially. It was going to double back to it, and then it disappeared, but I found it again. Uh, what's up, Matthew? Uh, saw you on and wanted to say hello. Excited for the season to start. Really would like to see Bullet Train, but probably not going to happen with my job dri driving trucks. No, I, I hear you, man. Hey, I really appreciate you donating. Uh, sorry I didn't see that earlier. Um, Bullet Train's fun, but I would definitely wait. If I'm being honest, I would wait until it's on um, streaming services. You know, because movies are so expensive. It cost my friend and I a total of $43 for two of us. I mean, movies are, are just getting more expensive in price. So, you know, if, if you can wait for Bullet Train, I would do it because it'll be there for you when it comes out. It's not something that is pressing and... It's not something that's going to get spoiled, you know. It's a good movie, though. I, I enjoy it, but it's it's above average. It's not the greatest thing I've ever seen. Like, what I would say is you should go out, and even if you don't, like, want to spend the money, just buy the black phone. If you're a horror movie le fan like me, it'll be good to just have that in your collection. It's such a good film. Um, You know, as far as Prey, like, I would buy Prey if it wasn't on Hulu. So... Thoughts on Bill Russell to commemorate his passing. Really sad. And it's always sad when you see an older guy who's a legend of the sport who's just always in the public eye. Like, he's always around. So it really feels like a loss. And I'm not saying that it isn't a loss if they aren't around, but a lot of the older generation of players won't stick around. They won't be on TV. They won't be at all-star games. They won't be at, uh you know, award ceremonies. They won't, per you know, basically give out awards they won't be at the the championship games bill russell was so it, it's a bigger loss in a sense because you've seen him around so much that now he's just not going to be there it's that's sad vince scully is a massive loss uh but uh, you know like bill russell we should well unlike bill russell because russell died way younger we should be celebrating vince scully for you know, living for 94 years, uh, getting to do what he did. And now he gets to be with, you know, his lost spouse. I mean, that, that was what he had already mentioned is that he, you know, he definitely missed his wife and, um, it's very sad, but at the same time, it's almost like a bittersweet thing. It's kind of how now he was taken from me way too soon, but it's, kind of the peace of mind I try to, you know, inject into myself about my grandpa because now he's with my, my grandma, you know. It's like, while he didn't get to live 94 years, you know, that there is some kind of, you can have some sort of acceptance in knowing that they are together, and, and that's that's kind of how I choose to look at that. But I can understand if that's not how everyone looks at it. But, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's sad. And then Vince Scully was the man. I mean, like, I loved listening to that guy. Like, and I wouldn't get all of his games because I'm in New York. I'm not seeing Dodger baseball for the most part. So, you know, I would watch it on like quick pitch and stuff. I'd watch on MLB network. He just has that voice that just, it works so well. And he was such a storyteller. It was great. Went back and watched some games in which he announced uh, with John Madden, like Rams games. Love that he had that multi, you know, dimensional broadcasting. Uh, it was really cool. So, you know, um, yeah, like I said, go, he, he's phenomenal. And Bill Russell seemed like a really good guy and was really good for the, the young NBA players really did a nice job of like lifting up the younger generation and, and pushing them into the spotlight, um, ambassador for the sport, you know, that type deal. So yeah, that's what I'll say about that, but. Um, let's see. Appreciate that, SG. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on him passing away. I like Elton John. I think Rocket Man injected more, like, interest in him, in my opinion. But... Why did Texas Rangers trade A-Rod? I mean, A-Rod wanted to leave. Uh, A-Rod was going to go to the Red Sox. And, like, he wanted to leave. The Rangers knew they were going to have to, like, let him go. He was trying to take less money to go to the Red Sox. And uh, the 
MLBPA, ironically, wouldn't allow him to do it. Then he meets up at a winter meeting, baseball meeting, whatever. He sits next to Brian Cashman. And Cashman jokes to him saying, hey, it's, you know, it's too bad that you play shortstop because we could use a third baseman here in New York. And he takes that to heart. And then all of a sudden, after the Red Sox deal fell through, he becomes a Yankee. And they trade Alfonso Soriano, who at the time was my favorite player. I did not know A-Rod would become my favorite player. I always liked A-Rod, but Alfonso Soriano was my favorite player. They trade Soriano for A-Rod, and, uh, and that the rest is, is history. I mean, A-Rod and Jeter were best friends. Uh, then A-Rod said some things about Jeter um, and you know, to the media, and it just basically ruined everything. So, you know, I don't think that they've had a bad relationship since, but I don't think they're necessarily, like, close. But that's how, essentially, like, that whole trade happened. And if I'm not mistaken, Soriano was good for the Texas Rangers. He wasn't A-Rod, but also A-Rod t- took steroids during that era. So the whole Texas Rangers stint, he took steroids. Um, yeah, Soriano, we got traded to Texas, only lasted two seasons. He hit 280. I mean, he, w- he was good. He was an all-star both years. And then they traded him to Washington uh, in 2006. I gotta look up. I don't even remember why they traded Soriano. So they traded Brad Wilkerson, Terme Sledge, and Armando Galarraga for Alfonso Soriano. He set a record for the highest salary ever rewarded in arbitration, receiving ten plus ten million, even though he lost his request for twelve million. Interesting. Then the Cubs signed him to an eight year contract worth hundred and thirty six million dollars. Um Soriano is another one of those Hall of really good players, but probably won't be in the Hall of Fame. But man, I loved him. And then he came back to the Yankees. That was awesome. The Cubs traded him to the New York Yankees um, for Corey Black. That was cool having him back. He came back for... He retired the same year Derek Jeter did. But yeah, that was cool having him back. They they also got Carlos Beltran, Jacoby Ellsbury. That's right. I couldn't believe they got him back. That was crazy. But Sounds good. Best sports player names ever. Um, Matthias Kiwanuka has to be up there. I always like that name. Um, Usain Bolt, I would say, it's one of the be- like one of the best. Weston Steelhammer. Um, Arlington Hambright. Got to remember some other names. Oshimago Atagwe. Yeah, that's a Ram right there. Bonus points. Oh, I'm trying to... There, there are some names out there. Um, I mean, TJ Hushmanzada. Come on now. How do you even spell that? I don't know. Those are the names that come to mind right now. I'm sure there's probably others out there, but good question though, Aaron. Oh, Aaron Jones. Can't forget about that one. Mario Vera, the Sandman, because he put batters to sleep at the plate in the ninth inning. Daredevil's suit will probably be short term. He will be back with the full red suit. Yeah, I know. It's just to sell toys. I mean, you said it. Now, 
she shouldn't have gone to that country without knowing the rules. But at the same time, they're clearly using her as a political pawn. Right? I mean, it's obvious. So, yeah. It's a shitty situation. I don't make jokes about stuff like that. I know there's a lot of people joking, but, you know. Could A-Rod possibly beat Coop in receiving yards this season? Will he be that good? Mind blown if so. I've been saying he will. I've actually said over and over again uh, on every show I've been on, I have pretty much said that Allen Robinson will lead the league in receiving. And I think if you are a betting person, you should go over to um, – if you're a betting person, you should go over to Caesars if you can. Go to – uh, leading the NFL, lead the NFL in receiving yards, and go to Allen Robinson, plus 10,000 odds. No-brainer. It's literally the best odds that you could have in sports betting, period. Like, if that hits... Who has better home run calls, John Sterling or Hawk Harrelsworth? I don't know. Hawk Harrelsworth's the one that said you can put it on the board, right? John Sterling, I mean, he kind of gets old, but I'll just go with him. Maybe someday. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. I don't know football on the level of X's and O's like, you know, former players and stuff like that. So I don't know if I'd be the best. I could do – I could be like a, a Joe Buck. Uh, Joe Buck, Jim Nance, somebody like that. Obviously not on that level, but like be able to call a game play-by-play play, but also have the information to actually add some color to it. Um. What's up, Nolan? Apples because they're any they're not anywhere near as much preparation and they're not as messy. Orange juice over apple juice, but apples over oranges. Meta World Peace, ma major apple white. <laughs> I've never heard either of them do color, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, yeah. Dear God. An A-bomb for A-Rod. Yeah. Avocados and sushi, uh, but cucumbers. Aside from that. Chocolate all day. Yes, I watched a lot on him. I'm a big fan of his. I just hate that he's going to Texas because I don't like Texas. <laughs> yeah, my name. Yep. Pisa, Tino Isamoa, and Mike ho ho and Mike ho ho Maunui. <laughs> Flipper Anderson's a good one. Yeah, Nolan, remember I was saying all that stuff about A-Rob and people were like, he only had 412 yards. And I was like, I don't care. He's going to lead the league. And he only had 412 yards. I was like, I don't care. Like, And now all of a sudden, everybody's talking about him. I think they're decently high. Uh, good quarterback. Not elite, but good. Will make the Hall of Fame. I wouldn't say he necessarily is the hall of famer i think he's on the hall he's in the hall of really good but you know <laughs> hey everybody is uh welcome here i became a fan at birth no i mean i became a fan as long as i can remember i've liked the rams so and the yankees and the lakers and the jayhawks Hockey's been a whirlwind. My dad was never super into hockey. I picked the Red Wings because my favorite color was red when I was four, and we used to play the NHL 97 or 98 game or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it goes. 
I uh, eventually just realized that like three teams, I like the Vegas Golden Knights. I started liking them before they even had players on their team. I like the Edmonton Oilers because I like Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. And I like the Devils because I've seen more Devils games than any game. They're close by and I go to, you know, I've got like five Devils games. So he's a freak. They call him the Greek freak and he wasn't drafted in the lottery. So before you go and credit these NBA general managers and executives and think that they know anything, they're the dumbasses that allowed this guy to get out of the top 15. I know, right? I mean, Matt Nagy was sitting there like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to drop a play. All right, all right, coach, draw this up. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. NFL coaches on the hot seat this year. All right, let's move up our chair and get more comfortable. So we got AFC East. No to the Jet or no to the Giants. Uh no to the Well, Cowboys, yes. I definitely think he's on the hot seat. Um Washington with Rivera, absolutely. Eagles, no. NFC West. Kingsbury, yes. Pete Carroll, yes. I don't think Shanahan and McVay. Um, Tampa, no. New Orleans, no. Panthers, yes. Um, Mike Rule is definitely, or, or yeah, Matt Rule is definitely on the the hot seat. Um, Falcons, no. I think he's doing a good job with not a lot around him. Arthur Smith, I mean. Let's see. Uh, Packers, no. Vikings, no. Bears, no. Lions, no. I think they should just let Dan Campbell do his job. Let him keep developing that team. That team doesn't have a ton of talent. I think they have a lot more talent than last year. But, yeah. Um, and that's it in that conference and the AFC we got obviously Tomlin should never be on the hot seat dude's a consistent masterpiece and the Steelers don't fire their coaches because they're a world-class organization the only people that want Tomlin fired are the racists <laughs> let's be honest here <laughs> the racist Steelers fans that always blame it on Tomlin the reason I, I remember um distinctively they didn't want Lamar Jackson because they could they didn't think he could handle being a, what it what it meant to be the Steelers franchise quarterback. Anyway, um, so Steelers no, Bengals no, Browns yes, Ravens no, Colts yes, I think the Colts it's fair, Jaguars no, Texans. Poor Lovey Smith. Yes. Um, Titans. Uh, no, because of what he did last year. Um, let's see. AFC East. We got the Jets. No. Saul is fine. Bills. No. Patriots. Absolutely. No. They're not firing Belichick. Come on. Dolphins, no. Do we have another one? Yes, the AFC uh, AFC West. Chargers, no. Broncos, nope. Chiefs, nope. Raiders, no. So those are your hot seat. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but you guys heard them. So. I'm, throw I'm from upstate New York. I spent some time living in uh, Marblehead, Massachusetts, and then I moved back to New York. But I was born and raised here. I've been here for over 20 years, so. Yeah, it is. 
they made Jay Jonah Jameson very similar to uh, Alex Jones. I thought that was funny. Oh, Debrickashaw Ferguson. Love that name. Upstate New York. That never should have happened, ever. Yeah, that's very true. You think it's going to be a rematch? That would be crazy. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think they're going to fire him. Yep. What is hashtag save JB from Ricky Hollywood? What does that mean? AFC is a gauntlet. Oh, it's it's ev all the time. All the time. I've been hearing it for years. Tomlin once took Devlin Hodges and Mason Rudolph to, like, the playoffs. Or at least they went, like, 9-7. and seven. Very, uneduc very uneducated. My dad raised me like him, and he used to live in Irvine. His next-door neighbor was Jim Youngblood. Exactly. Oh, of course. I appreciate that, Steve. Yeah, definitely. Also, just let you guys know, if you want to do it, you can. If you don't want to, you know, obviously don't feel like you have to. But if you want to support the channel further, you can leave a super chat. Donations are appreciated. Not totally, you know, they're not the end-all be-all, but they are very much appreciated. Um, I do take donations. But on top of that... Uh, we also have memberships as well. If you want to be a part of the channel, I'm adding all sorts of new perks uh, to our membership program. Added six tiers uh, from $0.99 cents a month to $99 a month. If you are a content creator and want me to mentor you, um, you know, give you, you know, coaching and all of that, uh, I am doing that now. So I felt like, you know, giving people that option was, was the right move. I'm excited for it. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave that <clears throat> again. I'm going to leave that link, pin that link in the comment section. <clears throat> and there we go. Pretty awesome stream tonight, folks. I mean, to be able to go live, you know, this late and still have, you know, 30 something people in here at this point. It's pretty cool. I've never been to the Statue of Liberty. I've seen it a lot, but I've never gone up to Liberty Island and actually seen it. I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm hoping. We'll see. Like dead skin on my lip. <laughs> yeah, Reich is... I think he'd be on the hot seat. He's my favorite actor, and he is probably the face of, you know, the male actor, I think, in the industry. He's the next Leo DiCaprio, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a rematch. I think it's Rams-Bills. Yeah. He was. You did? <laughs> That's crazy. I'd love to get Jim on here. I asked Jack to come on here. He did like the tweet, so we'll see. He just followed me, so we'll see what happens. I'd love to get Jack Youngblood on the show. So I like was one of the first people to really come out and say Patrick Mahomes the best quarterback in the draft when he was coming out. Um, this is back when he was considered like a third round talent. But I gotta say, as great as Patrick Mahomes is, and I do still like him, he's gotten very cocky in his approach. Um, so we'll see. But there's no excuse for him to have lost that game against the Bengals. They should have been in the Super Bowl, no doubt. Can you do a collab with Ram Showcase? I love his vids. Yeah, if he wants to, you know, he can reach out to me. I know I know Joe uh, Branham, so. 
you know, he, he used to be with DTR. So, yeah, I mean, if he wants to have me on a show, you know, he could reach out to me. Tell them about Hall of Fame membership, Jake. I don't know the Hall of Fame membership. <laughs> I'll go through the memberships, though. Uh, so we have the bronze member. We have loyalty badges and custom emojis as well as priority reply to comments. I do get busy. I try to reply to all the comments. I also do a really shitty job of doing that. So uh, if you are priority reply, I'll make sure no matter what, I'll, I'll hit you with a reply to your comment. Uh, silver member gets uh, the member shout outs. Um, gold member, members only live chats on Discord and auto follow back on all social media platforms. If I don't follow you already, then I will follow you. You just have to let me know what your handles are. Um, reason I give this away, it, very simply put, I used to follow everyone back and then I started getting nasty stuff on my page and I just got to the point where I was like, I'm on my feed and it's just not even suitable for work at, anymore. Like, I don't know, some people are into some weird shit and it would show up on my Twitter. So I stopped following everyone back. Uh, platinum for nine, nine, uh, nine ninety nine a month. You get to co-host a JE live with me. So that's platinum. You do have to reach out to me about that, the schedule, because I can't read minds. Um, Diamond members, twenty four ninety nine a month. You get the perks to of all those, but you also get to game with me, which is something because I don't really game anymore. Um, I'll occasionally go live on here, but I don't I don't game as much anymore. Uh, so gaming with me, private one on one Zoom hangout, um, unedited members only videos, and then lastly JE Plus is a membership program. It's it's a mentorship program, essentially. I'm going to tell you what to post, when to post it, uh, what tags to use, what titles to use, how to build your, um, you know, how to build your thumbnails, how to promote your thumbnails, how to grow, all of that. It's all of that. Basically, you just, you know, you have me, you can reach out to me, I'll help you out with. So if you're interested in that, I don't know how many content creators we have in here. I know SG is in here, but if you are interested in getting mentored and improving your reach, improving your channel, improving and just being OK, because I will criticize what you're doing because I want the best out of you. If you're interested in that ninety nine dollars a month, you get all access to all the perks I mentioned and you would get access to the mentorship program. I would help. I would show you how to grow on YouTube. I'd show you how to grow on TikTok. I'd show you all the stuff I'm learning on how to grow in social media, essentially. So, again, appreciate you uh you guys for for um you know signing up and becoming members if, if you did if you didn't no big deal uh but really do appreciate the the member signups appreciate the donations this channel you know has been made because of that i mean just the fact that we've been able to continue to carry this momentum forward uh, a big reason is because of the support i get with all of the memberships because it's just insane um you know to have 41 members uh you know to have I don't even know how many donations I've gotten, but countless. It's been incredible, and it's something that has really propelled this channel because it allowed me to quit my full-time job, essentially. I mean, doesn't mean that, you know, it isn't still tough, but I don't have to sit there and, like, like now I can actually do it. I can, you know, still survive without it. Uh, shout out to our bronze members, Scott B., Bradley St. James, Ray, Joakim Madsen, Jocelyn Miller, A Green Substance, Aaron Quinn, Irvin Arroyo, Dan Soriano, Ruiz Super Bowl Champs, Chris Kent, Ernesto Polanco, uh, Clifton Davis, Harold Toomey, Wildman Samurai, TKO1503, Steve Durrell, uh, shout out to our sil uh, silver members, I can't even talk, uh, Peter Calderon, Rusty Productions, Michael King, Aaron Jones, Captain Chaos, John Marble, and now... Alex, of course, have to mention Alex. Appreciate you, Alex. Um, then we have gold. Shout out to our gold members. Uh, we have DHP, AZZA, Eric Richardson, Joseph Garcia, RV Hopper, DC, Aaron Norris, Knight Rider, 123, LA Rams, and Drew Pulaski. Uh, platinum. Shout out to our platinum members, Matthew Plowden, The Dark Saver, P Train, Dolly Rama, and DC. And uh, those are our members. So, again, really appreciate you guys. Who will lead the league in interceptions, quarterback interceptions, and DB interceptions? I know Stafford criticized a lot with interceptions last year. 
Uh, who's going to lead? I think it's going to be uh, Trevor Lawrence again. Trevor Lawrence was tied with Stafford for most interceptions in the league. I bet you he throws the most again. Love to hear that. I lowered the bit rate so low, so like really, it probably doesn't look as good as it did in the past when it was working well, but now we're not getting as much frame droppage, so that's cool. Um, I mean, the level of frames that are dropped, I can see, is so minuscule, you wouldn't have even been able to notice. You'd, ha you'd have to have a magnifying glass. Um, so, yeah. I don't have any thoughts on San Jose uh, University as a football team. I don't know anything about them, really, so there's not really much for me to say, unfortunately. Trying to go to... I mean, I don't know about the Buffalo one, I'll be honest with you, but trying to go to, like, one of the 49ers, Cowboys, Cardinals, you know, one of those, uh, the Chiefs game. So we'll see what happens. Exactly, Brian. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. It's really odd, though. It's really odd. It's fine by me, though. I guess it's going to work well. I don't know. It's a good question. Is the Daily Bugle going to, like, take off? I mean, I yeah, it's a really good question. Is Betty Brant still going to work for the Daily Bugle? I think she did. I think she was actually doing, like, micro content for the Daily Bugle. But, like, is she going to start working there full time? That's true. Car's really good. Um, right outside the top 10 for me. Is Neil Peart <clears throat> the best drummer of all time? Best drummer I've seen. I know we both love Rush. So... I think he might be, but I, I think Mike Mangini of uh, Dream Theater is the best I've seen. Because um, he's just ridiculous. But I think Neil Peart is probably the greatest drummer of all time. Oh, I know. that That's normally how that works. That's right. I have not. I would like to go there. I like them. The dirt was kind of cool. Rock all day. If you know me, I'm a big rock guy. Yes, Brian. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. It's always fun. Always a pleasure. Maybe someday. His appearance fees are a little high. No, I hate country music. <laughs> like, I don't even hold back on that. I hate it. It's annoying. That would be something. I predicted that coming in the last year. Never been to Hawaii. Uh, neither. Yes, Bonham is definitely up there. You got Peart, you got Bonham, you got Portnoy. I mean, Stuart Copeland of the police was really good. There's a lot of really good drummers. The Bills. 
I don't really have a top pop artist. Um, so I couldn't really name five, to be honest with you. If you count Panic at the Disco as pop, Brendan Urie's number one for me. But that would pretty much be it. Their floor is like 11 wins, I would say. I think they win 14, but... Seven hour live video. We've done that before, but I don't do that very often. I don't know. I feel bad for him because he's got something wrong with his jaw. He's got that like disease and people were making fun of him, but I don't really think too much about Bieber. I think more about Shane Bieber, the pitcher for the guardians than I do him. Yeah, I'd probably just say neither, but Johnny Cash is a vibe. It's true. Anyone have any anything else? I think we're we're getting to the end of this stream. So annoying. Now I have a sore throat. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm talking a lot. Gotcha. Mr. Beast gave his hundredth hundredth hundred millionth subscriber in island um will smith used to make fun of bald people all the time so that was kind of rich but at the same time he's clearly in a unhealthy relationship with Jada so I don't know that whole thing was kind of like lame I don't know if anyone's better than Peer but I'll have to check out Danny Carey I didn't even know he was a uh, tools drummer <laughs> thoughts on Ultraman Ultraman beats everybody. Greatest guitar soloist. Jimi Hendrix. No, no. V Eddie Van Halen is probably the greatest guitarist ever. Hendrix is second. I don't think he wants comeback player of the year because he didn't suffer an injury and comeback player of the year has really gone to players over the course of history that have suffered an injury. So I can't see him winning comeback player of the year. No, it's not. Later, Aaron Jones. Peace. Santana's great. Hendrix was special. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Yeah, I'm not a Dodgers fan, so. Oh, fighting words. Oh, guys. Stevie Ray Vaughan was great. Really sad the way he died. So, guys, I think that'll do it uh, for us tonight. We keep growing just to keep tabs uh, so you, you guys know. 
Um, we're at 14,147 subscribers, trying to get to 14.2, you know, slowly but surely move our way up. Our goal is to get to at least 20,000 by the end of the year. Should be higher. Normally it's higher for me, but at least get to 20,000. Um, absolutely, JJ. Appreciate you. Um... Hey Dabney, what's up? Uh when will I be live uh next? Probably tomorrow, I'd imagine. We're gonna be recording DTR, so Alexis and I will record the podcast at some point um tomorrow. But I wanna go live. Sure she might be going live too. So we'll try not to overlap, but I wanna go live. I wanna put more content out. I've been so groggy today. Um so yeah, that's my plan. Live tomorrow. I try to go live every day. If I don't go live, then you know it was a failure. But uh, appreciate y'all for being here. I'm Jake Ellen Bogan. I'm exhausted. I'm probably going to be up until 4 a.m. That's just the way it works. And uh, that's that. So everyone go watch Prey on Hulu. And I will uh, see you guys soon. Later.